Many of us are familiar with um, pilgrimages. We go to Walsingham or Knock, to Santiago, Lourdes, Fatima. And actually this uh, road to Emmaus has been described as the first um, Christian pilgrimage. And I think there are maybe similarities. Often when we go on pilgrimage, we're anxious about something, we're maybe troubled, or we go hoping for um, guidance in our lives or even for healing. Now, while some of those things they were not expecting, Cleopas and his colleague on the way to Emmaus, they were perplexed. They were carrying uh, troubled hearts with them. And I think the thing that maybe when we go on pilgrimage, most of all that we want is uh, an encounter with God, is to meet the risen Lord. And they certainly did that. And from um, that gospel, I'd just like to highlight maybe three things, three important things. And the first of those is the welcome that they gave to a stranger. And they were perplexed, as it said in the gospel, and yet they made room, they made space in their hearts for this stranger. And you know, he must have been a little bit irritating, because could you imagine with all the things that we're discussing at the moment, and we met a stranger who said they didn't know what we were talking about, we would think, well, what's going on here? Where have you been? But they told him, and he listened. And at the end of that journey, they persuaded the stranger again to stay with them. They had compassionate hearts. You know, I don't know about you, in the last few weeks, I've met a lot of people that I, I didn't know. We've got uh, people working here, Emma and Jess, and uh, many others, uh, making PPE equipment for um, uh, hospitals and care homes. And then back at Sacred Heart, We've got others that I'd never met before, Tiffany and Kelly, Michael, Paul, um, and, and Penny. And they're providing food for people in need, befriending, uh, working along aside many of our volunteers too. And I feel like meeting these strangers, uh, my life has been enriched. And I'm sure that you feel the same. But the key thing to this is, for me, is if Cleopas and that colleague on the way to Emmaus had not had hearts generous enough to welcome a stranger, they would have missed out on the risen Lord. The second thing that I'd like to draw our attention to is um, the importance, the massive primacy of faith. It, it's really striking, the, the saddest words, I think, in that gospel are, we had hoped that he would have been the one to save us. We had hoped, almost as though that hope was just historic. It was gone. And yet, because of the generosity to the stranger, because of their love for Jesus, their faith and their hope was restored. And we know that once that faith was restored, they were never the same again. Their lives were completely changed. There's um, something I was reading about during the week as one of the great Scottish doctors from the 19th century was a Dr. James Simpson. And uh, he was a brilliant man who um, worked in all sorts of areas of medicine. He was famous for developments of work in midwifery, he also invented the surgical instruments um, that I think is still used today. But maybe what he's best known for is his introduction of chloroform. He and a few doctors were looking at ways where they could bring this in some sort of way of anaesthetizing people from their pain. They were trying different substances. And uh, one evening together, they got this substance that we now know as chloroform, and they inhaled it. And all three of them, woke up a few hours later, realized that they've discovered something that could be used. And if they'd inhaled too much, it could have killed them, and too little might have made no difference. And later in life, a journalist asked Dr. James Simpson, what was your greatest discovery in life? 
And he said to them, the greatest discovery in my life is that I am a sinner and Jesus is my saviour. And you know, in all the things that we encounter or find or discover, nothing is greater than what those two men discovered on that road to Emmaus. That Jesus is our saviour and he is alive. And that brings me to um, my final point, and, and that is that he vanquished death. Um, during the week, I had a, a, a couple of funerals at gravesides that were, and they're always sad, and people weren't allowed to come. There was no food, no congregation. And yet what they did bring to those funerals was faith. And in the, with the sun shining, with our faith and the scriptural readings, there was great hope in those two services. There was, um, there's a, an interesting cemetery in Romania, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called the Mary Cemetery. I think Wojciech might have a couple of pictures of it there right now. And it's fascinating because people flock there because unlike many other cemeteries, it's just so full of light and color and a lot of the gravestones, well, they're all personalized. They've got poems, pictures, sometimes jokes on them as well. Um, and when I was looking at reading about the history of it, it's probably a number of things that have come together with a great craftsman who was there. But in particular, it's based on that belief that this isn't the end. It goes back, in fact, to pre-Christian times, to... Uh, the Dracian sort of empire, where they believed when they died, they'd go to another country and meet their God. That's not too unlike our own faith. That in the resurrection of Jesus, we get a, a foretaste of what will happen to us. That he is the resurrection and the life. And if we can approach life without a fear of death, because of that belief, then there's nothing that we need to be afraid of.